This is One Sentence News, a daily podcast featuring three news stories with a sentence-long summary and one sentence of context apiece. I'm Colin Wright. This is a sponsored message. I've been using Anchor as my podcast host for a while now, and it's been a pleasure to use. Anchor offers benefits that most other hosts do not. It's free to use, but it also has a collection of tools that allow you to create a podcast completely within the Anchor website or smartphone app. They distribute your show to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and all the other distribution channels without any additional effort on your part, and you can make money from your podcast without any minimum audience size. So you can use it as a more traditional podcast host like I do, but it's also got everything you need to start a podcast from scratch. If you're keen to give it a shot, download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. It's Thursday, December 22nd, 2022. Let's talk about the news. From Axios, 3M says it will stop producing forever chemicals by 2025. Chemical and consumer products company 3M has announced that it will stop manufacturing PFAS, often referred to as forever chemicals, by the end of 2025 in response to proposed regulations of these substances. 3M was one of the first companies to manufacture this class of chemicals, which have in the years since been shown to last a long time, and which have been linked to all sorts of negative health outcomes. These chemicals, and there are just under 5,000 of them, have been eyeballed by the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency and the European Union for regulation, and this move would seem to be more about 3M getting ahead of a potentially legally and financially tricky situation, rather than it being a case of a corporation taking a moral stand. PFAS are used in all sorts of products, from fast food packaging to non-stick pans to firefighting materials. From the New York Times, Wells Fargo to pay $3.7 billion over consumer banking violations. Banking giant Wells Fargo has agreed to pay $1.7 billion in penalties and $2 billion in damages to settle claims that it committed all sorts of banking-related violations over the past decade. This is the largest ever fine imposed by the U.S. Consumer Financial Protection Bureau and is only the most recent example of lawbreaking by Wells Fargo and its higher-ups. So the size of this fine is seemingly meant to underline the fact that this company keeps on doing bad things, and banking regulators are getting a bit sick of it. This time around, Wells Fargo is being punished for charging overdraft fees, even when such fees were not applicable, not recording loans properly, and wrongly repossessing borrowers' homes and cars, among other violations. The previous largest ever fine imposed by the CFPB was for $1 billion in 2018, also against Wells Fargo, though $6.2 billion in fines have been levied against the bank since 2016, and they've racked up nearly $20 billion in fines since the financial crisis. And from Reuters, BOJ jolts markets and surprise change to yield curve policy. The Bank of Japan has loosened the yield control curve on its 10-year government bonds, signaling a change in posture by the Japanese banking system while sparking a surge in the value of the yen. The yen jumped by about 4% against the U.S. dollar shortly after this move was announced on Tuesday morning, and this has triggered a cascade of secondary effects across global markets because Japan has been the single holdout amongst major economies in terms of pivoting toward higher interest rates and tighter monetary policies in the face of rising inflation. And this move signals that they are aligning with everyone else to tighten things up, which should aid global efforts to reduce inflation rates while also increasing confidence in the Japanese economy. If you're finding some value in One Sentence News, consider leaving a quick review wherever you get your podcasts and or sharing the show with a friend. You can find out more about this show or subscribe to the email version at onesentencenews.com. And you can support this and other related projects like the Let's Know Things and Brain Lenses podcasts at understandery.com.